Oh, welcome to this tutorial. Here, we're going to be talking about worksheet references. And I think I've got a little something for everyone in this tutorial. I'm going to start out showing you three different ways to make worksheet references, or maybe four, depending on how you look at it. And one of them is going to work even if the user changes the name of the worksheet tab down here. Then I'm going to show you a very robust, simple little structure for making and maintaining your worksheet references inside of a macro or a procedure. And then I'm going to show you a great, simple function to use code names between workbooks. Because if you recall, you cannot use a code name between workbook references. And if you want to learn more about VBA, make sure to take my full VBA course. It'll take you all the way from beginner to intermediate to advanced level in one single course. And anything you don't understand here is fully and thoroughly explained in the course. There will be a link to it below this video. Now, let's talk about what we've got here. So two tabs. This one is named Dashboard, and this one is named Data. And let's go to the VBA window and make some references. Alt F11 and go to insert module and let's go sub let's call this guy my references and let's start out with a simple way to make a worksheet reference almost everyone uses it you type worksheets open parentheses quote and the name of the worksheet that you care about the name in the tab so data for the data worksheet and dashboard for the dashboard worksheet and then period, and whatever you want to do with it. Here, let's do a simple little select. And hit Alt F11. We're on the dashboard worksheet. We go back here. Let's make this guy a little smaller. And play. We go to the data worksheet. Simple worksheet reference, and you do something with it. But you can also use what's called an index number. So there are two worksheets here. So we have index number one for the first one and two for the second one. The first one will always be one, the second one always two, the third one always three, and so on. Index number just says, hey, I want to get a worksheet that's in this position. So it's not going to be linked to that specific worksheet forever. If you move it around, it will have a different index number. So one for the very first worksheet, and let's go ahead and just select that guy, comment this out. It's not required, but why not? That means the code won't run. And we hit play, and we go back to the dashboard worksheet. Another little thing for indexes, by the way, a lot of people want to get the last worksheet. Well, little trick for that, for the index number, it's going to be the highest possible index number. So we go for basically the container of worksheets, which is worksheets. It's the collection of worksheets. If that sounds a little bit crazy, don't worry. We're not going to be talking about it again here. So worksheets, let me reference that container, and then period, count. Count's going to tell me how many there are. So if there are three worksheets, it's going to return three, which is the last index number, which is the last worksheet. Comment that guy out, run it. Now we're on the last worksheet. Now this gets me to the third method, and that is code names. These aren't so often talked about just because sometimes it's a little bit more confusing to have to explain everything if you don't know about it, whereas this method is so easy for anyone to understand pretty much. So take a look over here. We have our worksheets, dashboard, and data. And the name of the worksheet is within parentheses. And you can see the names up here that are on the tabs of the worksheet in the workbook. But to look to the left, sheet one and sheet two, you probably just thought that was numbering off the sheets. Like I have sheet one because that's the first sheet, sheet two because it's the second sheet, and so on. But that's not true. That is the code name. So if I want to reference dashboard, I don't have to type all this out. I can simply type sheet one, period, and I'm dealing with the dashboard worksheet. Uh, this right here is the code name. So let's go ahead and select that guy, comment this out. And we're on the data worksheet right now. When I click in here and hit play, we go back to the dashboard worksheet. You want to deal with the data worksheet, reference sheet two, because it says sheet two to the left of it. Run it. There we go. But that is not at all helpful. Because when I read my code and I see sheet one, sheet two, sheet 37, what is that? 
So click your worksheet. Make sure you have these two windows open. You can go to a view and Project Explorer is the top one and Properties Windows the bottom one. So click the sheet and then we have name right here in parentheses. Notice that says sheet one. And down here we have another name without the parentheses that says dashboard. This is the name of the worksheet tab. This one up here in parentheses is the code name. And we can change it. So let's delete that and simply change it to dashboard, something that is easy for us to read and understand. So enter and look up here, dashboard. Let's do the same for data. Go down here and data, enter. Now we have dashboard and data. And sheet two is not going to mean anything now. So if I run this, we should get a little error. Variable not defined. And I only got that specific error because I have option explicit up here. If I comment that out and run it now, we get a different error, object required, because it can't find the object sheet two. It doesn't exist right now. So we can get option explicit back, delete this guy and make some readable code. Let's work with the dashboard. I can type it all the way out or type part of it, control space to fill it in, and then period select. So easy to read, play, and we go back to the dashboard. Now, is there any other benefit to this other than that I have some shorter code back here? And the answer is yes. The user can rename the worksheets out here, which is going to cause trouble with this. Index numbers can be very annoying to attribute to the correct worksheet unless you want the first one or the last one or specifically something like the second or the fifth one. But the code names can only be changed here in the code window. So in the Visual Basic Editor, when we go up here, click that and go down here. So the user cannot change this guy from out here. And if they change the name of these tabs, so let's say, dashboard five and data five, this is still going to work. Run the code and we go to dashboard five because notice the code name has not changed. So that's why some people use code names religiously and other people don't. It really depends on your code setup. But those are three or maybe four, if you count this one, different ways to reference worksheets in the workbook. Now, I want to show you a nice, simple little structure so that you only ever really have to make this reference once. Because if you use this, you may say, OK, it's great. Well, the user can never change that name because I've locked password protected and locked my project. That's the way you make it so they can't come in here and change this. Lock the project, password protect it. But let's say you have this reference all throughout your code and you want to change the code name. <laughs> You're going to have to do a find and replace and try and be very careful not to mess anything up. Uh, that's not very nice. So let's make another macro down here. And how about we call it a better worksheet or references. And all we're going to do here is a very simple little system with a variable. Let's make a little worksheet variable, set it as the worksheet type, and then set it. Set the variable. What do you want to do? Do you want to use a code name? Okay. Data. Now you've set the variable and you can use this variable wherever you want throughout the code. Let's just output the name of it. Message box ws dot name. And we can run this and we get a data five because that's the name of that worksheet. And the beauty of this is that we can use ws a million times throughout our code now as much as we want down here. And if we ever need to change this reference, all we have to do is change it once at the top of the macro. Now, it doesn't matter what reference you use here. So you could go worksheets, data, or you could go worksheets, two. Doesn't matter. Just make your reference, set it to a variable, use that variable throughout your macro, and you're good to go. And for those of you just beginning, yes, I know it's kind of a pain to do all this extra work. But trust me, in the future, you are going to be updating your code. <laughs> and you want to make that future a pleasant one. So use a structure like this. And not just for worksheets, by the way. Pretty much for every object variable type. You want to do a range. Oh, these are so helpful for that. 
but I'm sticking with worksheets here. So we are now done with this little guy. And let's go to the really interesting thing. At this point, it seems like code names are your friend, and you should just always go ahead and use this guy because look how nice and easy it is. But you can't use this when referencing a worksheet in another workbook. But with these two guys, you can. So if we're working with another workbook in this code, we can use this to reference the data worksheet in the other workbook, and this to reference the second worksheet in the other workbook. This guy isn't going to work, but it is if we make a nice, neat little function. So let's make a little function that's going to allow us to get a reference in another workbook for that worksheet using the code name. So we have two workbooks, and each one of those workbooks has a data code name worksheet. But I don't know what the user has renamed that worksheet to. So what we're going to do is to create a little function. Uh, let's call this guy function uh, get ws other workbook. Very creative. And what I want to do is I want to input a code name for a worksheet and a workbook reference and have this function return to me the correct worksheet. So we want it to return a worksheet as a worksheet. And what do I want to give it? By val ws code name as a string by val, so we don't have any issues with values being changed. Silly little VBA. By val wb as workbook. And oh, we need here one variable for the worksheet. And this is really so easy. Well, let's just loop through all the worksheets in the workbook that we care about and see if we find a match. For each WS in WB given to us right here, dot worksheets. Next WS. And we check if the code name of the worksheet equals the code name that we fed this function. If it does, then we are good to go. And let me get it in the middle. There we go. So even though we can't change the code name unless we click the worksheet and go down here, we can still reference it. So we can still take a look at it to see what it is. So here we just say, hey, is there a worksheet with the same code name as the one we care about? And if we're here, then there is. So we just return it. So we go set get ws other workbook set because it's an object and get ws workbook because it's the name of the function and we set it equal to the current worksheet. But remember, with a VBA, this is not going to end the function. So returning a value from our function doesn't stop it running, so we have to put exit function, one of those lovely little things in VBA. Now we found the correct value, we've returned it, and we're done with our function, so we go ahead and get out of it. But what if we didn't find a match? Well, you can do a lot of different things here, and you can make this really interesting. By the way, I cover this a lot in my full VBA course, where I talk about returning a variant, and then you can return either an object or you can return true false, and then you check for it, and you make really versatile, really cool functions. So if you want to learn about that, go to my course. But all I'm going to do here is to return the default value of the worksheet object, which is nothing. So set get ws other workbook equals to nothing. It looks kind of funny if you haven't seen it before, but that's the default object value. And now that we have done that, we're done with our little function. It's just a simple little loop function, and you want to make it into a function so that you can do something like this. Let's make a little sub to test it out. How about other wb code name ref usage great long name. And let's go WB new as workbook. And how about WS to work on as worksheet. And let's get a reference for a workbook, WB new. And we're just going to go workbooks.open. And let's go for test. And what did I call this guy? VBA code names file xlsx. So 
It has a dashboard and a data tab. They have their code names input into them. It's basically just what I have over here. But instead of dashboard 5 and data 5, it should be dashboard 2 and data 2, I believe. So we have the code names, and we can use that to make sure that we get the correct references. But now here we're going to have a workbook open, reference stored in the variable. Uh, let's go ahead and work with it. We need to first get the worksheet, so WS, to work on. And we use our great function now, get WS other workbook. Open parentheses. And we need to give it a code name as a string. You could hard code it like this. But why don't we just use the code name for this guy? So data is the code name right there. And what do we want to do? We don't want to give it the actual worksheet object. We want to give it a string. So dot code name. Now, didn't I just tell you to make the proper worksheet references at the top of the macro and then set them and then use a variable throughout all the macros and procedures? Yes, I did. So you should do that. <laughs> but I'm trying not to make this too long. So I'm just going to type it right in here. Get the code name however you want, though. The point is we're going to send it as text as a string. And if I click this and hit control I, code name returns a string. Perfect. It's what we want. Now, comma for that guy. I need a workbook reference. Do we have a workbook reference? Oh, yes, we do. WB new. So go back there. WB new. Close that guy up. Enter. And well, let's make it bigger, shall we? There we go. By this point, we should have a worksheet to work on, and it's stored in our variable. So we could go like this, WS to work on and whatever you want to do. How about we just return the name of that worksheet? And let's output it in a message box. Now, those of you with a keen eye might have remembered that I could return nothing for this guy, which means this could be nothing, which means this is not going to be good. So we, before we do anything with it, should check if it is nothing or not. And there is a really nice little way to do that. If not, WS2 will work on is nothing then. It looks a little bit crazy the first time you see it, but it just means, hey, if this guy has something, then okay, let's work on it. If we get down here, that guy has nothing. So we're going to output a message box that says worksheet not found. Remember, nothing is the default value. So if we get down here, that means this equals nothing, which is the default value, which means no worksheet was found. All right. And the very last thing I want to do is to close the workbook. So WB new dot close. I'm done with it. I don't want to save any changes. So space false for save changes. And I'm good to go. So uh, let's hit play and see what happens. We are in a new workbook VBA code names file two. And then we have dashboard two and data two down here. So it's a different file. And we use the data code name to get a reference to the data worksheet down here and output its name over here in a message box, which we can see is data2. Hit enter, and then we go ahead and close the workbook. And uh, that's all there is to it. Make sure you download this file if you want to get all the code used in it and that function. I have a few comments in the downloadable file and a very nice little comment set up for the function. And of course, if you want to learn so, so much more than what I showed you here, check out my full VBA course on teachexcel.com, where there is so much content that's going to teach you so many different things that you can do and provide you with amazing downloadable reference files. But for this tutorial, uh, that's all there is.